Coppinger's going to take it right foot to Coppinger! Oh! Doncaster Rovers have done it! Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Aaron Chan here for Forever Football DRFC, your Dogs Drovers fan channel. It is preview day for the match against Sunderland at the Stadium of Lights. Now, before we get started, I do have a huge announcement. You'll probably see it on social media this week. I'm going to be there at the Stadium of Light for the away game. So uh, if you do see me at the Stadium of Light, don't be afraid to say hi. Uh, Sunderland or Rovers fans, or if you support another club and you come into the game just to support the clubs as a neutral, fair play. It's going to be a buzzing place. You know, 38, I think it's like something like 38,000 tickets sold for the game. It's unbelievable. I think. Just over 800 of them are Donny, so I think, um, you know, we're looking at 38,000 or around about 38,000 Sunderland fans, which is mad, absolutely crazy for um, for League One. Uh, for League One, it's crazy, but um, no, I can't wait to be at the game, even though it could be an embarrassing result on paper with Roy Keane possibly coming in as manager. Jermaine Defoe making his debut. It, the, the writing's on the wall that we're going to. It's going to be a cricket score. We're going to get humiliated. Um, you know, and I, I don't take any positives coming out of this game. I think um, the approach from Gary McSheffrey. You know what? He, he takes the responsibility for the team selection against Rotherham. Fair play to him. You know, fair play to him. He apologises. He don't want to make the same mistakes again. You know, he speaks ahead of the Sunderland game, saying that, you know, it's going to be a great atmosphere. And, you know, people will say it's enthusiasm over experience, but, um, you know, there is the positives and negatives to enthusiasm over experience. The positives is you've got a positive mindset going into a game that you're not going to win on paper. The bad thing is, obviously, you need the experience to back it up and you need the um, managerial know-how to back it up. And, you know during the talk, you know, you've got to back the talk and, you know, try and back the talk and, you know, before the, the Rotherham game, there were a couple of games before that where we saw what McSheffrey was trying to do with the team at times, but we just couldn't turn it into results and that was probably the story of our season this season. Um, but, um, but yeah, it's, it's a weird one for me. Um, I, you know, I should be, go you know, this is my last chance probably for an, another, for at least a year or so to be at the Stadium of Light. And, um, you know, on paper, it's not looking good. It really is not looking good. Um, but overall, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Um, like I said, we could go up there and, you know, learn from Rotherham and twist the scripts and things like that. But I've got no confidence in us twisting the script i really don't so let's go into my predicted team uh i've gone with lewis jones back in goal sorry don't no one come at me about jonathan mitchell for me lewis jones back in goal um back four of ben jackson joe alohu ollie younger carl noyle that's got to be the back four horton has to be given a rest now he was turned so many times in that rotherham match though that's before that he was it wasn't great. Um, MK Don's match, uh, exposed on that left-hand side time and time again. The past two or three matches, plus the Rotherham game as well, I just feel like he hasn't been at his best. So for me, he needs a break, give Ben Jackson a start, allow him to settle in that role um, for the rest of this season now. You've got to give Horton a rest, in my opinion. Yes, it might hinder his development, but if he watches what Ben Jackson's doing, then maybe he might learn a bit from Ben Jackson that he might not have gained before, and that might help his development. Um, I've gone for a midfielder, Smith, uh, Galbraith, and Tommy Rowe at Cam. I think Clayton just wasn't fit enough to start. And I do question McSheffrey over why would you start a clearly unfit Adam Clayton over Ethan Galbraith unless Ethan Galbraith was less match fit than Clayton I don't know um, but I would start Galbraith over Clayton Clayton would bring that physicality for the last half an hour 20 minutes of the match uh, if we're trying to see out a heavy defeat or try and see out a draw or try and see out a win well actually no I don't even want to be I don't even want to see out a draw against Sunderland if the wind's 
there for the taking, go for it. Um, but I would start Galway over, over Clayton. Uh, then Tommy Rowe at Cam. Now the front three, this is where it's crucial. I would go with Martin on the left. Don't know why he was dropped, unless it was a fitness problem. Don't know why he was dropped for the Rotherham match. That Again, that's another tactical decision from McSheffrey. I have to question for that game, uh, where McSheffrey, for me, has to take some of the blame. Not all the blame, but some of the blame. Um, on the right hand side, I've gone with Odebeko. I think when he was playing on that right, I think when he was playing in that front three uh, before when he first appeared, I think he looked all right. Um, so maybe play him on that right hand side, on that right wing, and try him out. And then up front, I've gone with Rio Griffiths. I do not want to see Joe Dadu anywhere near this front three. Nothing against him personally. He's just not got the finishing third at the moment compared to. In my opinion, Meepo, Rio, Josh. Those are the front three I would go with if they're all 100% match fit. If you're forced to play to do because of match fitness, fine. But I hope he turns up. And I hope he turns up as much as possible. I'm not saying we're going to win the match, but at least turn up. And again, this is what I was talking about. And this is why I was so fuming um, in the Rotherham match. You could see my frustration. That was calm in some moments in the vlog. But that one moment, especially when I said turn up in a bloody derby, I was fuming. And people will take that as embarrassing. But for me, I take, take it as passion. At least I got more passion than those players did in that match. If the players showed half the passion I did in the stands in that game, maybe we might have had a chance in that match to at least give them a good game. You know, give it some thought, guys. Uh, but I want to thank everyone for their support on social media, you know, after what people have said. So uh, I want to give... Thanks to everyone that supported me as well. Um, if it's not your cup of tea, it's not your cup of tea. But um, but there we go. Um, now my scoreline prediction to end the video. I'm going to go with a 3-0 defeat. I just don't see any positives from this. Um, I don't want us to lose. But that's just what I realistically think is going to happen. I'm going to go for another 3-0. Uh, I'd be surprised if it was more goals. I want to keep it respectable though. So I think 3-0 is a respectable scoreline um, against Sunderland. Especially with all the odds stacked against us. Uh, but there we are guys. Thank you very, very much for watching this video. Make sure you do like, comment, subscribe. And for now, I'm Aaron Chandler from Fro Football DRFC. Keep living the Rovers life. And that, my friends, full time. Rovers side die. Thank you very much. And I'll see you all at the stage of light tomorrow. Rovers side die. Come on, Rovers. Don't you let me down again. I'm a